Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here on this Thursday. All right, let's talk some mountain weather. And I want to start up in the Pacific Northwest at Mount Baker Ski Area. So Mike and Sam right here, they put together a really nice video. This was shot yesterday, and they're standing in the rain. I mean, this was the big issue, and it continues to be a significant issue for the next few days. Uh, but let me just play a little bit of the video. Wait and see mode, uh, no question. I mean, it is so warm. Um, I would actually, uh, they, they, he points out the 18th or 19th. I would actually say that the shift may come on the 16th or even the 17th uh, with a significant kind of shift to the south in the jet stream um, and potentially a pretty large storm system coming in. But you can see the issues. 39 at Heather Meadows, 37 up on Pandome there at the top and of the ski area. So clearly, uh, this is, this, this is the, the big issue. This is what's going on. Crystal Mountain, Timberline, Hood, it is just way too warm across a lot of the West. So I'm going to focus on what's coming, what's next, when we break out of this, when we're going to get some relief in this forecast. One place that's been doing extremely well is Revelstoke up there in interior B.C., I mean, every single morning I'm waking up and they've got new snow. Last 24 hours, 29 cm. Look at this, over three feet in the last seven days. So they're doing exceptionally well at Revelstoke, but there are a lot of places struggling. Let me take you into Colorado. So this is up at Arapaho Basin. You're looking off towards the Montezuma Bowl. The lights in the distance, that's Breckenridge there on the 10-mile range. Extremely windy. The last 48 hours in Colorado with gusts up to 80, 90 miles an hour. And it's a big time warming wind. Uh, I mean, temperatures up at like tree line or at freezing. So it's, it's very warm, uh, even in Colorado at the highest of elevation. So here's radar. The, the problem is the warm air, and there's just a ton of rain with this warm atmospheric river trajectory. Now, the, the river itself is going to take a break for a few days. Then we'll start to get into that change around 12, 16, 12, 17, into 18 and 19 as well with a dip in the storm track. And that should bring in some colder air um, out of the north to filter in to a lot of the west, not just the Pacific Northwest, but a lot of the west um, over the course of time there. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the satellite and the big view here. Um, so wow, look at this. When you talk about a stream of moisture. There's your pipeline. So you've got warm air and you've got moisture streaming in on this pipeline straight into the Pacific Northwest. Now again, it's going to take a little bit of a break. There's still going to be precip, but it's way too warm to see any big snow until we get later into the period. Here are my bullet points. Here's what I'm seeing. So I've, uh, I've decided to sort of change my outlook now. Uh, I want to talk about when we start to see uh, better conditions. So we know the rain snow line's high, but when does the pattern change? When does the colder air return? It looks like there is some sort of a significant shift across the west on or after 1216. So that's about five, six days from now. Um, so it is a bit of a waiting game and it's all going to kind of start up in the north and then work its way to the south. So if you're in Utah, Colorado, it's going to be a much longer wait for that change. Here are the best odds of snow and it's you know, look at there. So that's Colorado, 12, 17, 12, 18. That's, that's a ways off. Utah, 12, 17, 18, 19. Tahoe, 12, 16, 12, 17, 12, 18. Idaho, you've got precip coming in as early uh, as late 12, 15. Wyoming, 12, 16. Montana, you've got precip continuing this afternoon, tonight, into tomorrow morning, and then there comes that uh, that that larger pattern shift, 1216. Um, interior BC, it is just a heck of a pattern that continues, um, basically from today all the way through the period. So you you'll continue to get uh, snow accumulation there. Let me show you the forecast radar here. So this is. Um, you're looking at on the clock, this is 11 a.m. today, Mountain Standard Time. 
December 11th. There's your moisture trajectory. Again, very, very warm. All right, let me move this ahead. So there's 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. There's 8 a.m. tomorrow, 8 a.m. on Friday, December 12th. A lot of precip up there in Montana. At higher elevations, you'll see snow. Um, there's 5 p.m. Friday, Mountain Standard Time. There's 8 a.m. Saturday, Mountain Standard Time. Let's move into Sunday. Here's 5 a.m. on Sunday, Mountain Standard Time. Again, there's just not a lot going on across the West, just waiting on the storm system. So here's 11 a.m. Mountain Standard Time on Sunday, December 14th. You can kind of see there comes the precip into the Pacific Northwest, but it's still, it's still a couple of days off. The actual shift in the pattern is still a couple of days off from this. Once we get into about the 16th, I think you'll start to see more of a shift into this area with precipitation and colder air moving into that uh, to the northern Rockies. Here's a time height forecast for Colorado. This is a basin. Um, the next three days roughly you're looking at a slice through the atmosphere all the vertical layers so that's the current time and you move in this direction three days into the future. There's nothing here. It's all wind and dry air. You see those drier colors it's all dry and windy. Look at these wind barbs, 50, 60, 70, 80 mile an hour winds out of the west northwest. Waiting game. Here's our pressure. This are, these are the anomalies, forecast anomalies on Friday, 1212. Um, there's our high pressure ridging across the west with moisture in this area up here. Um, colder than normal across a lot of the Great Lakes, and this is the storm track coming out of the Canada with a, a series of Alberta clippers hitting the, the Great Lakes in the Northeast. Here's 1217. So look what's happened by 1217. This is a pretty big difference. I'll take you back. There's 1212, 1217. You see the pressures drop across the West. This is what I was talking about. All of this, all of these colors represent lower than normal pressures versus the last 20 years. So you've got higher than normal pressures down here getting pushed or squeezed to the south with uh, a shifting jet stream to the south which is what we were looking for so colder than colder temps slowly filtering in and a little more action now this is this is 1225 so this is christmas looking way down the road massive high pressure here but there's your there's your lower than normal pressures off to the west coast. Now I want to show you um, this is a comparison for 1225. Your AI model is right here, and there's your operational. Um, a, they're actually very similar. Higher pressures here on Christmas, higher pressures right here on operational, with most of the lower pressures in colder air in this area right here. So there's there's actually a pretty decent amount of agreement on that. I mean, some obvious differences, but pretty interesting to see. That's again Christmas. And, and I'll probably continue to show this comparison um, in the coming days and kind of see how the two models handle that long range forecast. Here's a uh, look at uh, the atmospheric river potential, the integrated vapor transport forecast. This is effective up here around the Washington-Oregon border. So a big drop in moisture, uh, 12, 13, 14. But then we have a moderate to strong atmospheric river coming in. And this is right on the front edge of that, uh, that pattern shift potential. So this is 15, 16, and 17. So you got to figure you bring in the storm system or storm systems, and then you pull in the colder air behind them after 1216. At least that's the way it looks right now. Total moisture over the next four days. So this just runs us through the weekend into early next week. Your trajectory remains in the northern Rockies. And again, most of that's going to be rain, unfortunately, and heavy rain at that. Looking at the desert southwest, same thing, different vantage point. There's nothing happening here. What you see is very late in the period where the um, the pattern starts to shift to the south there, but that's very late. 10 to 1 snow forecast, Pacific Northwest, 
Idaho, parts of Montana, Wyoming, it's too warm. We're just not going to see that much accumulation. Now, what you see up here is on the very highest Cascades, uh, Rainier in particular, Whistler Blackcomb, um, generally above seven or 8,000 feet. So that's way up there. And interior BC continues to do very well. Some snow there for Glacier on the higher peaks and east of the Continental Divide uh, in the colder air that's sliding through in Montana. Everybody else is out of it. All right, I'm going to do this in two phases. My snow forecast. These are grand totals by the close of business on 1215. So you can clearly see, I mean, the warm air is just eroding any snow potential. I continue to shave these numbers way down. So uh, it's, it's really just rain on snow up here through Bachelor, Timberline, Crystal, Baker, Stevens at the ski area at Baker. Uh, the, your elevations are just too low. The rain snow line is just too high of elevation. So th there's really no hope right there. Uh, but still looking at good accumulations higher up at Whistler Blackcomb. I've got seven on the way for Rebel Stoke, eight Marmot Basin, Kicking Horse. Looking at Bamp, still in the game there with a foot through 1215 there at uh, Sunshine and Norquay. Uh, not much at Red Mountain and Fernie. It, it's just too warm. Too warm, Schweitzer, Brundage, Sun Valley. It, it, there's just not much. There's really nothing to write home about here. And clearly there's nothing happening to the south. Now, here's the shift. This is phase two. This is 1216 through 1219. Mid-mountain and higher. Look at the numbers. Completely different. So effectively, we pulled some colder air, and I hate to say cold, but cooler air in here. Uh, pushed the rain snow line down to lower elevations, more realistic, more normal for this time of the year. And we've, we've delivered some snow. We've generated some snow. You can see the numbers. Could we see feet of snow? Like it, but Baker? Um, yeah, possible. That's the way the data looks at this point. Uh, the, still kind of on the periphery in Utah and Colorado, but at least things have started to change. Good numbers up over the Tetons, 10 to 20. Uh, look at the numbers up here, 6 to 12 through a lot of Montana. Finally back in the snow, 8 to 12 in Idaho. And looking at good numbers up here through interior BC and uh, the Banff area. So... It's just a matter of time, but it's going to be a tough five, six days of waiting and very warm. And that really doesn't solve the problems in Colorado or Utah or Arizona or New Mexico at this point. It may shift it a little bit, but we're not seeing a, I'm not seeing a, a big solution right there for those areas. Um, let's look at the Northeast. So four-day rolling snow accumulation, staying cold with numerous clippers, <clears throat> and light accumulations, a little heavier coming off of the lakes, Michigan, Erie, Ontario. Otherwise, I mean, it looks like kind of a one to four inch snow for a lot of the ski areas. In fact, here's my official forecast by the close of business on 1215. There it is, one to four inches, most of the ski areas, 99%, and that's probably going to do it. All right, guys, we're going to end on the, uh, the snow forecast here across the west. Again, it's a two-parter. Between now and the 15th, not a lot happening. But uh, the phase two of this is uh, much more optimistic. Let me see if I can pull that back in there. There it is. See how things change. There's our hope. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.